This week on Supercars Talk, I'm going hardcore and drinking a cup of tea on my shiny new bar and talking about what's in store for round two of the Supercars All-Stars E-Series. So with the COVID-19 lockdown, I've had a bit of time to do another little project uh, that I planned to do over Christmas when I did the rest of the um, set, I suppose you'd call it, um, put in a bar. And because it's a school night, I'm going to christen it with a lovely cup of tea. Ah, delicious. <laughs> Maybe when I uh, have a bit more time, we might get into something a bit harder and... Um, have some friends around and um, actually use the bar for the intention that it's, you know, it's supposed to be used for. So anyway, we're here to talk about supercars, not about this bar. So um, round two of the uh, E-Series is going to be on tomorrow night. Uh, that's Wednesday. Um, there's some format changes for this round. Uh, we're going to see four races over the night. Uh, they're going to have qualifying for races one, three and four. Uh, race two will be a reverse grid of the finishing order of race one, if that makes sense. Um, the first two races are going to be at Silverstone. The second two races at uh, Barcelona. If you're familiar with the Formula One calendar, the first uh, the races at Silverstone are going to be around the current Grand Prix track. Um, unfortunately, yes, it is that butchered mess. Um, it was probably about five, six years ago now. Uh, possibly even longer, where they put that middle section in there and kind of butchered the track and took away its soul. And yeah, anyway, that's my complaints about uh, the Tilkadromes wrecking the Formula 1 calendar. But in good news, uh, the Barcelona, Catalonia, we're going to see them revert back to the old school layout of the track. Um, not a big change other than they, a few years ago, they put a crappy little chicane in towards the end of the track so you didn't have... There's um, two right-handers that finish off the track that make the, the last corner a very high-speed corner. So they put in a chicane before the last corner to slow things down, basically, for the Formula 1 cars. It's going to be the old layout of the track, so they get a better run. Um, probably actually not better for the supercars. Um, they might have actually been, might have been better racing with the supercars if they had that chicane in there, um, you know supercars respond a bit better to those kind of corners because people can actually get in there and have a bit of rub and whatever whereas the formula one prefer to see them going flat out around the last corner speaking of formula one drivers everyone's favorite dutchman max verstappen is going to be partaking in this round of the uh, e-series so uh, that's exciting um Talk about your wild cars, that's a big name, and uh, a name that we're not going to see this round is Dave Reynolds. Um, apparently he was on some borrowed equipment, I've heard, and he doesn't have the borrowed equipment anymore. Uh, so Will Brown's going to take his seat. Will Brown, um, if you don't know, young bloke who's in the Super 2 series, will be Dave Reynolds' co-driver in the endurance races, if they ever happen this year. Um, so he's definitely someone who's well qualified for it and definitely someone who's better versed at this iRacing thing than what Dave Reynolds is. So probably a good addition, could probably run up the front with um, Anton Di Pasquale. And speaking of Anton Di Pasquale, um, I can't even pronounce it how he was doing it, but did anyone else have a problem with how Matt White was pronouncing Di Pasquale? It was like it was a totally different name. Um, I've had some issues with Matt White and his commentary style over the years, and that just confirmed to me he shouldn't be on the commentary. Um, it was kind of nice not having the Scaife Triple Eight love fest going on. Um, I really, really like Crompo, and glad that he was there. Uh, but could we please have someone a little bit better than Matt White? Uh, you know, it's not hard. Maybe even get Jess to do the commentary. She seems to know what she's talking about. It seems in this iRacing that equipment makes a hell of a difference and we've seen uh, Heimgartner, apparently he's having some computer problems. Uh, he's put the call out to try and get a new machine before the race. Apparently with uh, all the upgrades he's made to his steering wheel and things like that, the old computer's not holding up to the task. Uh, 
kind of funny that um, he's in that position now and um, might make a suggestion, maybe go over to Rick's joint and steal his computer because, you know, it's not like he's taking this seriously. So, you know, maybe you could have a bit of a swap for this round while you sort yourself out. Uh, better than you not taking part because Andre is definitely one of the front runners. I think he's actually fourth in the championship if that kind of, you know, it's, it's a bit of a fun game. So... Fourth doesn't mean anything, but I'd, I'd prefer to... Pro, I mean, Rick's somersaulting thing was really good to watch, but I'd prefer to watch someone like Jaime taking part in these races because he will be a good front runner rather than, you know, just someone tootling around the back, uh, you know, just there making up the numbers. Speaking of making up the numbers and Rick Kelly, uh, he's actually upgraded his screens this time. So he had like a little, probably about a 24 inch screen for the last setup. Uh, now he's got, it just looks ridiculous. It's probably like three 75 inch screens around him. It looks amazing. Um, probably another kickback from someone like Harvey Norman or LG, one of their sponsors. Um, but, you know, if I had a sponsor wanting to give me something like that, I would not be saying no to it. I'd be saying, thank you very much. Bring it over. Let me start playing this game. Uh, so if anyone wants to sponsor me with, you know, driving wheel and a computer and iRacing and whatever, feel free to drop it off. Um, I'll send you my address um, where you can give it to me. One little thing that we didn't really cover in the review from last round uh, was the penalty that Deep Squally got. Uh, Apparently, Beardo wanted to give him a five-second penalty, uh, but with it built into the iRacing software, he they couldn't, so they gave him a penalty, and it just gave him a 30-second penalty within the software. Apparently, they're looking into that, whether they can change it or something like that, or, you know, give it a normal kind of supercars penalty. It did seem harsh at the time, um, because it's, you know, it is a bit of a game kind of thing, so... You know, as I said, you didn't get, you know, too caught up on it that, you know, oh, Jack LeBrock's won his first race and, you know, God, Anton got kicked out kind of thing. Um, but it would be a bit nicer, you know, and the guys are going to get more serious with it. It's going to get, you know, closer, I'd imagine. So it would be nice for things like penalties like that to maybe not affect it so much because uh, a 30-second penalty seems ridiculous for what happened in that. Um, especially considering some of the other accidents that happened during the race that didn't get penalised. Um, so it's good that they're looking into things like that and looking to change things like that too. Um, yeah, so that, that's a good step and hopefully we see that fixed up moving forward. So that's my quick preview for this round of the E-Series. Um, we've got a wildcard coming in and it's a big name. It is a proper big name wildcard. Hopefully there's more to come for the future rounds. This um, Max jumping in, you know, might encourage a few other guys to get involved. Um, the big question on everyone's lips is though, what will Nick Perkat's paint job be? We still don't know. We've got 24 hours essentially to find out. So, you know, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. Um, I hope you like the bar that I've added in here. Something a little bit different. Um, I'm thinking about doing some episodes that are a bit different. I'm not sure if I'm going to fit them in weekly things because there's not much happening at the moment. Um, but doing a bit more feature kind of videos, a uh, bit more on that to come. Yeah, so not sure if it'll be a normal weekly thing. We're going to try and do a review after each round, uh, similar kind of format to last time, time permitting. Uh, so we've got that to look forward to. Um, and I'm currently on 99 subscribers, which I'm really excited about because when I get to 100, I can register the YouTube name, uh, youtube.com slash supercars talk. So that's really exciting. Then I only need 900 more before I can monetize this and start bringing in the sweet, sweet YouTube cash. Um, <laughs> apparently, a thousand subscribers doesn't or oh, a thousand views doesn't get you much money but it means that instead of using just recycled bits of wood around here for things like this uh, I can actually invest in sets get some proper lighting and things like that and not you know trying to do everything on the cheap so anyway uh, until next time I'll see you later